Hey everybody, Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon coming at you with a couple of pro revenge stories. First one, scumbag aunt ripped off my grandma for years, I put my nose in her business and had the IRS financially ruin her. Let's jump right in. Hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. This happened about 5 years ago. My grandma was getting old, late 80s, early 90s. She had one wish, to not die in a senior home. Easily done, as my grandpa sold some assets way back when, then invested the money and let it ride for 30 plus years. He never touched it and collected a pension. Way back when my grandpa died, about 10 years before this, my grandma appointed my dad, this sh aunt, and my uncle as the trustees of the trust. Basically, the trusted advisors for her and her care for the foreseeable future. All was well in the beginning. Then my dad, Willie, moved further away and couldn't take care of the day-to-day -day upkeep as the trustee and to see that my grandma was okay. My aunt, Rebecca, told her that she and my uncle, Fred, who lived in Arizona, could take over and all would be fine. It was fine for a while. A few times my dad went back to visit and noticed my grandma didn't always have overnight care or that her mail wasn't picked up and the driveway wasn't plowed. She also lost her cable TV and newspaper subscription. My dad figured it just lapsed so he had the services put back on. My dad also noticed my grandma was eating moldy food at times because her truck was sold and she had no transportation. She drove up to 90 years old. She basically just chilled at the house alone and did crossword puzzles. The craziest part of this is that my aunt only lived two miles from my grandma, but my grandma told my dad she saw Aunt Rebecca once a week on Saturday for about one hour. As with the elderly in age, my grandma passed away. She did get her wish and was able to die in her own home. Upon her death, things started to get real interesting. Once the probate lawyer got her children, my dad, aunt, uncle, and another estranged aunt, Becky, around the table, some shady business started to come out. My aunt Rebecca asked that everyone just forego any audit or paperwork and they just sell the house for around $400,000 and divide up the remaining bank account balance of roughly $400,000. So just signing on the line, each sibling was to get a check for $200,000, not too bad of an inheritance. My dad thought that was somewhat a little rushed. He said at the time that he wanted to wait because my grandma's house was easily in the $600,000 range based on size and location. My aunt exploded in his face, cursing at him and calling him all kinds of names because he was unwilling to sign the assets then and there. She basically wanted a quick close while everyone looked the other way. My dad ended up leaving the room after the screaming and the deal wasn't signed that day. It took nearly six months before another appointment and they were all back at the table. The thing is though, when you are a trustee and the person dies, the funds and access to financial accounts are all under heavy scrutiny until all beneficiaries are made aware and sign the final papers. At the next meeting, my dad went in there with no intention to sign the deal. He got his brother, my uncle Fred, to agree that they audit the entire accounts going back five years. When they demanded this again at the meeting with the lawyer, my aunt ended up arguing that a forensic audit would cost $5,000 and it's a waste. Like what difference does it make? Two beneficiaries requested it, so it was what was going to happen. The audit report showed up about three months later. Here is where it gets good. My dad began looking over the audit report, saw it was full of holes, like excessive monthly food costs for a 90 year old lady, payments made for car services for a car my grandma no longer had, many different things in there, they just didn't add up. My dad asked me to give the audit a second look, so I spent a Saturday night going over it, and here is some crazy stuff I found and alerted my dad about. Costco monthly food costs of $1,100 to $2,000 for the last four years. Telephone bills for six cell phones Grandma has a home phone only. Gasoline for a truck my grandma didn't have for like four years and easily $400 a month. House repairs paid to my aunt's husband who owned a construction business. Some of the house repairs were like $16,000 for a new roof, new garage doors, home security system which she didn't have etc. All inflated prices. Grandma paid for my aunt to go to Europe twice on vacation. 
My grandma was paying my estranged Aunt Becky a stipend of $2,000 a month for the last five years, as well as her deadbeat son for $2,500 every month they were paid. All grandkids were to be paid a lump sum of $10,000 upon their 30th birthday, as that is when the $50 check from grandma stopped for all grandkids. Guess who was paid out? Her kids and my estranged aunt's kids, but not me or my siblings. My grandma gave loans to my aunt Rebecca for her husband's construction business in return for equity in the company, which amounted to nothing. These loans totaled about $200,000 over three years, right around when the housing bust happened. They also sold her assets like jewelry and whatnot for cash, because some big ticket items simply vanished from her house. Armed with all this, the next probate meeting was interesting. In the time between my grandma's death and the third probate meeting, my aunt's construction business filed for bankruptcy so that $200,000 in equity grandma had simply vanished. The probate lawyer was also somewhat concerned and makes it obvious that this was fraud and breach of fiduciary duty where my aunt could actually get real prison time. After this, the negotiations were much more favorable. My aunt got nothing, literally zero. My other aunt only received $25,000 after all the stipend payments. My father and uncle shared the rest. After the grandkids received the $10,000 payout, the house sold to the first offer for $520,000. That was the regular revenge for any treacherous bitch that ripped off grandma and had her eating moldy food. Here is the pro. My aunt probably felt bad that she couldn't supplement her lifestyle with grandma's money anymore, but that was the least of her worries. Since she tried to personally rip me off for $10,000, I took it personally. I don't care how tough you are, the IRS is the scariest thing that can happen to a person. Nobody wants to have their money forcibly removed. I did a little research and found the 3949A. I also had the audit, and legal office could and would provide the full trust if requested, demanded by the IRS. I don't know if it ever was. So I photocopied my documents, had them notarized, and send off the info to the IRS. I felt like it went nowhere. Then, maybe 18 months later, I was notified and asked to come to the IRS building for an appointment in my city. The agent went over all the details, what they found in their research, and then they asked for a sworn statement. It turns out my aunt didn't declare something like $1.2 million in additional income over five years, and as such, she owed the IRS around $420,000 plus penalties. There was no way she was going to pay that on a teacher's pension and after her husband's bankrupt his business. Her house was sold, her vehicle sold, and they left the state. Now aunt and uncle live in a depressing desert town in the southwest. The IRS paid me around $60,000 about three months after the appointment. She should have paid that $10,000. Money and greed can really tear a family apart. I'm glad OP came out on top in the end. I had no idea that the IRS would pay out, I guess, a finder's fee to somebody who reports someone who owes that much tax. That's pretty cool. On to our next story. Want to fail half the class because you lost our papers? Enjoy early retirement. Let's jump right in. So this happened during senior year in high school four years ago. I had an English teacher named Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith, or how she liked to refer to herself, Dr. Smith, she didn't have a doctorate, was a mean old bat that hated anything and everything. She was ugly inside and out. To give a mental image of what she looks like, her face sagged so much, it looked like she had a perpetual stroke. She had about two feet in between her eyebrows and her eyes. Imagine Ursula and Cruella de Vil had a child, and then that child had a baby with the devil. You get Mrs. Smith. None of the other English teachers liked her. There was nothing that they nor the administration could do due to her tenure. That is, until I became her student. Her teaching style included, but was not limited to, yelling at students, putting them down with petty insults, having us read to ourselves in the middle of class, kicking out students that were dozing off, then later fall asleep at her desk, not letting female students go to the restroom for very obvious reasons, and the occasional losing students' work, then accuse the students of not turning their work in. The last part is what crossed the line for me. You see, I wasn't a grade A student and I sucked at English. 
so I always played my cards right and made friends with everyone, students and teachers included. So when I struggled and couldn't do something on my own, I let my charm save me and cash out on my months of being nice to everyone. However, no one could be friends with Mrs. Smith. I tried being polite. I was met with rudeness. I tried asking her how her morning was. I was met with silence and dead stares. I tried asking how I could improve in my writing skills. She told me that she wasn't willing to help. Within the first week of class, I knew I had met my match. So halfway through the semester, we're working on a big research paper. However, the day after the due date, Mrs. Smith had to go up to Illinois for some family issues for two weeks. Mind you, we turned in our papers both in hand and on turnitin.com for plagiarism checking. No biggie, we won't get our grades back for a while, but at least we won't have to deal with her bullshit, or so we thought. A few days after she gets back, only about half of the students got their papers back, the other half, including myself, were sitting there staring and waiting, thinking that she was going to go back to her desk and pull out the remaining papers to return to her students. But nope, she told us to take out our textbooks and start reading Beowulf. Some students, including myself, that didn't receive their papers, tried to interject and inquire about our papers, and she snapped back with, You should have turned them in when they were due. In unison, we responded with, We did. Of course, she denies it, and within a few days, our grades drop immensely. At the end of the grading period, second six weeks, our report cards show a big fat F for English. Everyone is livid, and the worst part is, if you get anything below a C, you were to be moved to a lower level English at the end of the semester. Between the zero from the paper that carried almost half of our grade, and only a few weeks remaining in the semester, almost half of the class was doomed to fail out. Now, most of the students were happy with having to leave her class. There was not much they could do, but I was careful. Remember the teaching methods I mentioned above? Well, Mrs. Smith thought that because we were in a classroom that had no cameras, her behavior wasn't being recorded. She was dead wrong. From the second week on, I started recording audio on my phone every day from the moment I walked into the class to the moment I left. Every day. I caught every single one of her personal attacks on students on tape. When she fell asleep, I pulled out my phone and recorded her. My pleas for help to improve and her refusal to help weren't left out either. Every day, I would go home to cut the audio to keep the good parts. And every day, my collection of dirt on her grew. And remember how I said we used Turnitin.com as well as paper? I had coordinated with all the other students who were going to fail to screenshot all of their Turnitin receipts and send them to me as proof that they turned in their work. When she decided to fail me for her mistake, she unleashed hell on herself. I went straight to the administration and scheduled a parent-teacher admin conference. A week later, my parents, the principal, the school counselor, the head of the English department, and Mrs. Smith were all present. I started with how she had lost half of the class's work and most of us failed because of it. She denied it and again accused us of turning our work in late as well as cheating and a bunch of other bullshit and lies. I remained calm and just pulled out a folder that contained all of the screenshots from my backpack and handed it to the principal, who then passed it to the head of the English department, who then asked Mrs. Smith to explain it. She instantly turned red in the face and started stuttering. Before she could get any words out, I say, that's not all, listen to this. I pulled out my phone and started playing back the highlights from the semester. All the while, I'm staring dead into Mrs. Smith's eyes while trying to hold back a eating grin. The suspense in the room would have killed Jason Statham. After the audio finished, the principal looked at me and said, I think we've seen enough, and asked me to leave. I sat outside the conference room, savoring the muffled yelling through the walls. I'm pretty sure I heard my dad utter the words, filthy but I don't want to point fingers. The parent-teacher conference was on a Friday. I walked into class the following Monday to see an empty desk and a substitute teacher we all recognized and loved. 10 out of 10 would document everything again. I think there's a lot of people in positions of authority like this who think they can get away with pretty much anything because they're older and have been there for a long time. I think OP in this story has proven that that's not really the case and that they do need to be held accountable for their actions. Good work, OP.
Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I ask you to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.